Greetings, everyone. I'm not even sure if I should be having this discussion with you, but I am tormented, you know, and like everything else, when people are tormented, you know, they, they oftentimes look for people to help them out of the situation. Sometimes people are tormented. They actually lash out on people when all they have to do is ask for help or just to say, you know what, I'm going through this or that. Let's talk about it. So today I want to talk about this, but I'm going to start out telling the story of how I started my locks or why I started wearing locks. I started my hair 12 years ago in Jamaica. And when I went to the person to start my locks, my hair was probably this length. My, my hair was this length and I had texturizer in my hair. So I, I never really ever liked uh, perming my hair straight, but I put a little texturizer in it. Uh, if the rain comes down and my hair get wet, it will be pfft. So I didn't have much chemicals in it, but this chemical was there, right? And um, I went to her here, this length, I said to her, cut it off. And just because I wasn't putting any texturizer in it for a while, it still had some in there, but you still had growth, you know. Maybe this, this, this length of natural hair. I said, cut it off. Well, because I'm from Jamaica and most people adore or worship having hair, she refused to do it. So she started the locks with the chemicals in it. I wanted to lock my hair because for the first time in my life, I finally wanted to do something regardless of what anyone else would think. I never told anybody I was going to do it. And at that time, I noticed uh, more black women in Jamaica were wearing locks, not for spiritual reason, but for some kind of awakening within them that they themselves did not understand. And when I started it, so many people uh, were telling me, no, 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 that's not for you. And, you know, you could hear the prejudice. That's the first time um, I started seeing the prejudice that existed in Jamaica towards Rastafarians. Because even though individuals acted like they were cool with locks, when you really listen to them closely, you can see the prejudice. So that made me want to do it even more. I told my father that I was going to, and his comments were very prejudiced. It made me want to do it even more. But it wasn't so much about the spirituality. At least at the time, I wasn't thinking it was about the spirituality. But I'd always loved the Rastafarian movement. I'd always loved uh, Rasta men and women. I thought a lot of them were very wise and, you know, very deep in their spirituality. I didn't mind identifying with these individuals, but I was not altogether committed. I wasn't, you know, uh, in terms of the religious aspect of things, I wasn't really there. But I started the journey. Sometimes we start a journey and we don't quite understand it because the spirit is bringing us somewhere. So 12 years later, I've cut my hair so many times before because with it uh, uh, starting with chemicals in it, I was just not satisfied with the way it was looking, really soft and limpy looking. I wanted it to be thicker. I wanted it to look more, you know, and I've always had very thin hair. Um, I'll tell you another story about that, but somehow, somewhere, uh, you know, I'm not proud to admit that I have other races in my blood, but it's very obvious that the man that I got from my father is not my father. Put it that way. So I had to cut it over the years just to get it where I liked it. Eventually chopped it down all the way down and just starting fresh. And there was never a problem. Recently, my hair, and I have it in curls to make it shorter because it it is very cumbersome because it's so long. So recently I said to myself, you know, I'm really going to cut it down some because it's really cumbersome. It's heavy on my head, on my neck. It's just a hassle. It's just in the way. I'm on the bed. I'm tied up in my own hair, you know? So I said, well, what I'm going to do is cut it shorter. And impromptu, asked my daughter to hand me the scissors and I started cutting. If you can see. Every strand of my hair is the same length. I don't, I don't know how I managed to grow my hair like that. I don't know because I cut it all the way down and started, for, you know, with the same length. But it just grew the same length, right? The front was the same length as the back. If I put a front one, one from the front and put it to the back, it would be the same length. And so I started with the front naturally and I chopped it. 
So you can see the difference between these two, where I cut it and where the true length is. Same thing on the side. So I parted the front because I wanted to start from the front and I chopped it. You can see the difference. So it comes here. Something happened and I had to stop to go attend to that situation and just never got back to it that night. And I thought, okay, next day I'm going to go back and finish the work. Started shorter, but in my mind, I'm thinking of going even shorter. I go to my bed that night and I had a dream. I'm waking out of the dream in the morning. And someone says to me, like someone jumps at me in the dream and says to me, you broke the vow, you broke the Nazarene vow. That's how I came out of my dream, frightened. And I'm like, what? My husband says to me, what is it? I said, what is a Nazarite? A Nazarite. Nazarite vow. Yeah, Nazarite vow. What is that? Now, of course, I'm good with word association. So right away, I kind of had an impression that it has something to do with Jewish, the Jewish faith or, you know, the uh, Jewish people. It came to me right away, that association. So I got up, I went to the washroom and I was like, how, how did I break the Nazarite vow? How? I never took any vow. I sat down and I literally heard the spirit said to me, you cut your hair. You cut your hair. I said, like, what? Loud enough for others in the house to hear me because I heard that. Now, I don't know what this vow is. I was just going there to do my business and then come back and research that. Because it's in my mind, taking Nazarite vow, Nazarene vow. I was trying to remember the proper term. When it says, you cut your hair. And suddenly, I started getting reflection about the Rastafarian movement. I started thinking, well, you know, Rastafarians, you know, believe that you shouldn't put comb or scissors to your hair. And all that stuff came flooding. So, of course, I, I rushed to my computer and I start researching it. Wow. I was tormented for the entire day. A dream, walk, waking up out of my dream here and the person coming at me and saying, you broke the vow. But I said to my husband, I, I never took any vows. So the Nazarite um, vow involves not uh, drinking um, any alcohol made from grapes. I don't drink alcohol. You know, I don't need a vow to tell me that. It's just not, it was never my thing. Uh, I've used um, alcohol in the past to bake even recently i used it to bake a black cake for my daughter i won't be doing that anymore but but apart from that and i love grapes i love raisins i've never really had any problems with this never really knew what this nazarite vow was about i looked it up and before i even had a chance to look it up the spirit said you put scissors to your hair so when someone tries to tell me that we're disconnected from the spirit and that, you know, everything else is right. If it's called Christianity or if it's called whatever kind of religion, we have to understand that most of the time you find yourself going through all kinds of troubles in the world. There's an answer and usually it's a spiritual one. So I wrestled with it for a couple of days and I'm thinking, well, based on this, and if I don't want to be displeasing the spirits that dwell in and around me and if i don't want to find myself at the opposite end or the wrong end of divine grace i've got to obey the spirit somehow after i did that after i cut a part of my locks i literally went to um, to like what seemed like a whirlwind A tornado, like a storm. And I was spinning in it. And I kept saying to myself, well, if I did this thing unknowingly, when did I ever make that pledge or that promise? But by growing one's locks, you automatically takes that vow without speaking the word. We are taking vows every day in our action with the things that we're doing, the things that we're participating in. And we don't realize it's very important for you to understand these things. Because if you don't, when the storms come, when the storm rages, you will not be able to with, overcome it or, you know, withstand. 
And I'm not going to tell you that it's easy because my hair is crazy way it grows. And I'm thinking in another one or two years, this will be past my knee. And it's difficult. Uh, I usually don't take care of my hair. My husband does that for me or my daughter might help me with it. I'm just not a hair person. But I don't think I'll be able to put scissors to my hair again after what I heard in my spirit. And after I asked the question, how did I break a vow that I never even took? And, and hearing the answer and then going to do my research and finding out that is one of the key things, not putting scissors to your hair. Not knowing what it meant and even having the answer and checking out that I was freaked out for that day. I was freaked out. I'm still freaked out. And I'm taking it that the Spirit is saying, asking me to take that vow. And I don't like making promises. Because sometimes I make promises that I cannot keep. You know, we're rebellious in our spirit sometimes. But I have to make a commitment. And if I'm going to allow the Spirit to use me for good, then I must show that I am obedient I cut my locks. I wouldn't say chastised, but was reprimanded. I was reprimanded for doing that. You can't talk to me about a God that I don't know anything about. You have to talk to me about a God that speaks to me. If we want to use the term God, you have to talk to me about how the universe communicates with me. It's real. It's not in the imagination. It's real. It's real. Listen carefully. Pay attention to your dreams. And do not fear man. Don't fear what man can do to you. Fear what the spirit can. And fear... This is not even a good term to say fear. What is it? Respect the spirit. Invite the spirit. Those of you who are Christians, you know, don't forget to leave me a thumbs down because, you know, you don't like this kind of conversation and I respect your feelings. But since this is my channel and there are at least one or two persons who will understand what I'm talking about, it's real. <laughs> it's real. The evidence is here. Be obedient. Yeah. To the spirit of course you have to be able to differentiate between these spirits because there are demonic spirits around you that will try to tell you things but when you notice or you hear certain things and you're guided to certain information like i did with this nazarite 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 vow excuse me because it's still a new term that i'm using and engaging with and it's nothing that's leading you into darkness nothing that's going to bring you into any disrepute You've got to be obedient. Stay blessed, everybody.